Where do you go for new outfit ideas? To Instagram, right? Ultra-fast social networks are having a huge impact on fashion. These days, influencers are as important as fashion critics and supermodels. How is this changing the industry? That's our topic on Shift today. Hang on. Hashtag OOTD. My outfit of the day. Instagram and fashion are pretty much a perfect match. After all, Instagram is all about visuals and making things look good. Many people with a knack for self-presentation have already become rich through Instagram. Some influencers are even known worldwide. Fashion brands largely rely on Instagram. They use the platform to define their image and to set new trends. And some are working at a higher pace than ever before. Until recently, fast fashion brands like H&M or Primark had the quickest turnover. They needed just four weeks to get a new look into their stores. This is now much too slow for ultra-fast fashion brands. They rely on algorithms to design exactly the clothes millennials want. These days, it doesn't take long before a look trending on Instagram gets picked up by retailers. Speed is of the highest importance for ultra-fast fashion brands like Boohoo or Misguided from the UK. Ultra-fast fashion brands are very good at copying the latest looks from celebrities and influencers and can get a design produced and ready for purchase in just one to two weeks. Fast fashion brands, can you please wait until I wear this in real life before you knock it off? Kim Kardashian posted last year under this photo. Ultra-fast fashion brand Misguided chose not to. You've only got a few days before this drops online. They answered and tagged Kim Kardashian. She didn't think that was funny, sued the company and won more than 2.4 million euros in damages. Was that bad news for the brand or good advertising? Ultra-fast fashion is pretty smart. Here's how they bring an online trend to your closet in under two weeks. Retailers were quick to adopt artificial intelligence for trend monitoring. They use image recognition algorithms to analyze the clothes people post. The AI assigns up to 150 attributes per image. What the algorithm does is very similar to what I'm doing right now. I'm scrolling through the feed and looking at pictures. The difference is that the algorithm is much faster. And it can categorize and assign many more attributes to the pictures to then sort the clothes into clear trends. Let's say flower dresses are trending. Then a small test collection is produced and the dresses are shown in several variations. Based on the orders in their online shops, retailers can quickly learn what sells. These days, the clothes are mostly made in Europe. Thanks to a digitalized supply chain and short distances, there's no need to store a large stock. Companies can now produce on short notice. One factor is that having things produced in Asia has gotten more expensive. Another is that if you want to play the ultra-fast fashion game, you'd have to have items flown in by plane. Taken together, these aspects mean that it's become less expensive to produce in the UK. Ultra-fast fashion doesn't have physical stores on shopping miles, long lines at the cash register, or huge mountains of clothes in a warehouse. They only produce what is ordered online, in small batches, as needed. Some ultra-fast fashion brands can offer up to 100 new items of clothing online per day. There's definitely a demand for constantly evolving collections, especially among the groups of buyers these websites are targeting. This is a very young customer group who are active on social media. And there, it's very important to constantly show new looks. But come on, buying new things every day? There's no way that's environmentally sustainable. Fashion trends are necessarily transient. But consumers constantly buying new items damages the environment. According to a recent survey, 33% of women in the UK consider an item of clothing old after wearing it twice or more. Practically new pieces get thrown away and donation containers are often overflowing. The retail industry is responsible for more carbon emissions than all international flights and maritime shipping combined. 
and the more clothes are produced, the more resources are used, from water to energy to chemicals. A clear reason to dislike brands fueling this trend. But on the other hand, some British ultra-fast fashion companies manufacture domestically instead of thousands of kilometers away because they need short, quick supply chains. That's an advantage. As is the fact that ultra-fast fashion is often only produced on demand. So there's little stock surplus that has to be disposed of when it isn't bought. It's not always clear exactly why something becomes a social media trend. Take the Amazon code. That's what this winter coat for sale on Amazon was dubbed. In 2019, it was so popular that it got its own Instagram account. People even made little models of it, out of Play-Doh and pie crusts. A huge triumph for the label. Brands define their image on social networks and attract customers' attention, including mine. I barely even notice old-school advertising like billboards anymore. No surprise, right? Traditional advertising has become less important for fashion companies. Online marketing already accounts for more than half of their media budget, and the proportion is set to increase. Fashion brands have to present themselves on social media with stories, with influences. They have to be relatable and create experiences that generate added value for others. Fashion brands become quasi-lifestyle consultants and retain customers through beauty tutorials and other topics. Or they create a hashtag community, where customers show how they wear the brand. Some fashion companies even have their own moderators, who regularly meet stars to talk to them about this and that. Fashion becomes a minor matter here. It's all over, it's all over tonight. I need that the crib. Oh, God, I love you. Traditional luxury brands initially struggled with this type of customer loyalty. In the past, part of luxury brands like Prada, Gucci or Yves Saint Laurent was that they wanted to be very exclusive. They've opened up now. Look at Gucci. It's sharing its brand value and brand identity. And this has led to higher sales and also to a high level of enthusiasm, especially among younger target groups. Gucci has even had meme competitions to promote a watch. The big advantage of social media is that the brands are independent from advertising networks or TV stations and can communicate directly with their customers. Treating the customer like a friend is a lot of work for marketing teams. Friendships need to be maintained. And large fashion brands use influencers for this. Millions of people follow them. Here's why. Influencers, their choices shape trends, which is why many get paid by brands to promote products. Unlike stuff commercials, influencers aim to come across as giving tips to friends. Kylie Jenner and Kim Kardashian are masters at this skill. Each has more than 150 million Instagram followers. A reach that huge is attractive for companies, but that's not the only reason why influencer marketing is booming. Brand communities, brand communities make the brand or label seem closer. Influencers share their experiences, both good and bad, and that creates a sense of emotional proximity, trust and credibility. An influencer fair in Hamburg. Companies here are looking for new ways to reach customers by triggering emotions through social media. You sort of follow an influencer through their day. They may have similar challenges and beautiful moments to you, especially for teens. Younger influencers go to school just like other people do. Maybe they have their first boyfriend or girlfriend, the same as everyone. That creates a bond that isn't as present with a salesman. Almost like a real friend. But there are also refreshingly different Instagrammers like the hype beast grandfather Alois Abram. His grandson, Yannick Diefenbach, dresses him in luxury streetwear and posts pictures on Instagram. With over 700,000 followers, Yannick's influencer grandpa also gets sponsored. But even non-real people can become influencers. Lim Laquila is an avatar created by the US startup Brud with over 1 million Instagram followers. 
Her feed looks uncannily similar to other teen girls' profiles. Avatar Michaela dons well-known labels like Calvin Klein and Ambush, and never spills the perfect promoter. An integral part of the scene are micro-influencers. They don't have millions of followers like Kylie, Kim, Kendall and co, but they are important for companies. Because the mix of brands and everyday life on their streams makes them more relatable to their followers. To keep users on the platform longer, Instagram now also offers shopping directly through the app. Being able to shop without having to leave the app. That's the idea behind Instagram Checkout. Users can buy clothes, handbags and shoes they see on Instagram directly in the app. Payment is by credit card or PayPal. Data such as your shipping address can be saved for future purchases and the platform keeps you updated regarding the status of the order. Instagram Checkout has been available in the US since March 2019. The beta version included brands such as Burberry and Prada, Adidas and Nike, as well as Zara and H&M. To date, Instagram shopping is available in 77 countries. Products are shown with their price tag. If a user clicks to buy a product, an in-app browser opens, which closes after the purchase is completed, so that the user is back on the stream. For Instagram, the goal is clear. The more time users spend on the platform, the more detailed their user profiles, meaning that personalized ads can be sold at a higher price. For users, it's mainly about the convenience of browsing and shopping online without having to change platform. But fashion-conscious people can be pressured by Instagram. And if you're buying a new look every two weeks, you are not only hurting your wallet, but also the environment. Some brands are offering greener options. The Norwegian label Carlings launched an entirely virtual collection which means customers can get a picture of themselves in a perfectly tailored outfit without the outfit ever having to be made. It looks good on Instagram and saves resources. Would you spend money on a virtual jacket and what do you think about ultra-fast fashion? Let us know. That's all from me for today. See you next time. Bye.